What I learned, finally, was that the mind is useless when it comes to anything significant. <laughs> because it is how you create illusions. It is filled with stories. When it comes to healing, your mind needs most of the healing. Your mind has to be healed or your body doesn't do anything. Your mind is, a, uh, is not your ally when it comes to healing. It needs so much work, it's unbelievable. The part of you that has the power is your soul. It's your soul. Your mind will trick you. It will tell you whatever you want to know. When, when I remember one of the thought forms that was introduced in the 19, I don't know, 70s or 80s, and it's become a kind of a surrogate creed, is that we create our own reality. Remember that little tidbit? <laughs> mm. And like all mystical teachings, we've taken it and twisted it into something self-serving. It is true, truth, that we have a profound influence over what we experience as reality. That is a mystical truth. It is not truth that we create reality. That is preposterous. Because I'll throw it out to you and ask you, how are you doing with your reality? Is it everything you've ever wanted to create, I ask you? And what's your formula? No, you do not create reality. What you do create is a subjective interpretation of everything that you experience. Which is why what I say and what you hear are two different things. Which is why I may say something, but what you hear me say is filtered through your experiences and your vocabulary. And how you interpret a word according to how, what you associate that word with. According to your personal history, which is why we're going to do a very interesting lecture on the power of words and the power of vocabulary. So you do have a profound influence on your, the maintenance of what you call reality all the way down to how you experience your relationship to time itself. You create a relationship to time for, and to perception. For, and the way you create that has everything to do with how many anchors you have in your life. Again, this is something I realized when I was doing medical intuitive readings, and that the more anchors you have in your life, the more things you hold on to, the more, and, and you know, I'll give you a very, very, very simple analogy. If you have a lot of stuff that you hold on to, a lot of stuff, do you have a house with a lot of stuff? It's going to take you a long time to move. If you live like my dear friend Penny, if you live with, very, with a minimal amount of stuff and you get a letter from God and it says, I need you here, she can pack up and be gone by evening. She doesn't have to think, oh no, what am I going to do with all my furniture and all my china, all my this, all my that? It's all so significant. No, it's not. 
It's just stuff. And these are just dishes. These are just, this is just rugs. But for me, what if I walked in there and I said, this isn't significant. This is a rug. This is a glass. This is a piece of silverware. But you see it through your reality. This was my mother's. This was this. So you project all kinds of stuff onto this that I don't. So in your reality, zzz, you have emotion. You have anchors. You've anchored experience into inanimate object. There's no experience in this knife. This is what Buddha calls illusion. There, do you see an experience in this knife? Bang, bang, bang. Polly's dead. <laughs> okay, There's, I, this, I can't make an experience come out of this knife. I'm banging. Where's that experience? Bang, 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 bang. It's not in here. <laughs> I'm trying to get it out, but it's not. I can break the dish. Now what? Your mother's still not here. Do you see her coming in and smacking you? No. OK, these are dishes. Do you still remember your mother? Even more. She's not in this dish, and she's not in the knife. So somehow, you have to extricate yourself from a plate, <laughs> from a plate. But in order to move you, it will take months, and it'll take me minutes, months and minutes. That's the same, that's a ratio of speed. That's the same amount of speed it would take you to comprehend a truth. Take her minutes, take you months. Because you don't want to think that fast. There's something in your mechanism that says, I don't want to know things that fast. That's the same amount of speed. That's the difference between the rate at which someone like Penny would heal and the speed at which you would heal. This is actually how you create your relationship to time. You, everybody finds anchors. Now, some, everybody has their different, now, some anchors are not, but this is how people have stuff as anchors, and they have, what happened here? Wait. Hold it. Hold it. And they have stories as anchors. They have relationships as anchors. Here's an anchor relationship. I can't do that. He needs me. He needs you for what? If you st were doing this, how would that change this? Why would that change this if you were doing this? I can't do this until why? You are anchored in a story and I've said to many people, why don't you just tell me you don't want to do this? And stop anchoring it this way. Stop it. Just tell me this, and let's go from there. Leave, and, and as one of the exercises, you are not allowed anymore to use another person's name in any of the reasons you give yourself for why you do the things you do. Nobody's name is ever allowed again, ever, in any of the reasons why you think the way you do, you do what you do, you say what you do, ever. No more. When you talk about yourself to yourself or to anybody else, it's only you. It's only you and your soul on the hot seat. If you don't want to do something, it's not because of another person. It's because you don't want to do it. No more being a child. You are in your power or not. And you get to even say, I'm powerless. I don't want, I'm a coward. Own, own, own yourself. 
No more hiding around someone else. No more. This is called spiritual truth. No more. No more running backwards. No more hiding in your history. There is no more history. It doesn't exist. You have to say, this is it. I'm using a wound. I'm about to use a wound. I'm about to use a wound. I'm about to do it again. You don't get to do that. Instead of saying, I'm right here in the present, I'm comfortable in my discomfort, and I'm not ready to leave my discomfort. Are you with me? These are your new rules. So you get to stay where you are, but you can't use your history. You have to say, I'm in my present, and I, and I have to own, I don't want to go. I'm, I'm comfortable on the couch, and I'm not going to use my history. I'm simply going to say, I like talking about moving, but the truth is, I'm not going anywhere. You're going to change it to the truth. For how many of you would have to do that? Oh, stop it. <laughs> OK. This, 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 is a, this is how you begin your path to spiritual congruence. This is it. You start actually with hardcore truth. This is spiritual direction. This is it. You start directing yourself. You start, and you stop talking as though you're promoting things that are simply not true in yourself. You stop allowing yourself to talk about things that are not true. There's no more of that. No more. You can't, you can't go there. 